Hi, welcome back. Uh, I'm just here with Floor Mat. Uh, we're just going to be doing a little bit of a uh, carpet heat seam. Um, just showing a few tools that uh, you can purchase from Floor Mat. Um, but, uh, but here we go. So, just with a little bit of carpet. So, what we're going to do first is use a row finding needle and within the direction of the pile of the carpet. Um, so, what I've done. I've chopped carpet in a wavy line just so you know that I can't just pop it back. So all that we're going to do is follow and not rub out behind us. Just a line through there. Okay. So we've just used the point of the row finding needle. All that we're going to do on the second run, just going to lower the needle down, just making sure that you're holding it so you're not rubbing the line out and widening that line. So I don't know if you can see that. So we're just widening that line. So that makes it a lot easier then for the loop pile cutter to run down it and create the perfect edge for heat seaming. So on the Roberts loop pile cutter, again, can buy this from Floor Mart. What I'm gonna do, cause I'm cutting the right hand side of the, the heat seam, just gonna loosen the bolt and push the right hand blade down into the gully that's at the bottom and just tighten that up. Okay, so we need the height. So the second bolt at the back is spring loaded. So that can go up and down. So I'm just gonna find out the height that's needed on that. Okay, tighten that up. Make sure the blade nice and tight. And all that we're gonna do, just holding it behind and we're just following the loop pile cutter. Down the channel that we've created. So just taking that all the way. So that's coming off. So what we've done is cut the back in as close to that pile line as possible. Okay, because we need to get the heat seam nice and tight and as invisible as possible as well. What we need to do at this stage, this edge is open to fraying. So we need to use some seam sealer all the, all the way down the edge to stop that from fraying. Okay, so all that happens there is we just have the applicator on and just running down the edge okay and then just underneath and then we're just taking the seam sealer adhesive underneath and just with my finger underneath i'm just then taking any excess of that adhesive offset so that's going to happen all the way down so second piece of carpet again with the pile direction just gonna take that down very quickly and second time lowering it to open that channel up again and down so on the loop pile cutter we're just going to swap the blade to make sure that we're cutting it as close to that pile as possible. And then, nice and simply, taking it down. Okay, remove the excess, and at this stage, we're gonna seal that edge again to stop any fraying. Okay, so at this point, we should be able to pop the carpet down and see ish how it's going to look. We're going to make that a little bit tighter. So heat seam tape, just today I'm just going to use the standard heat seaming tape. I've already got heat seaming iron. Again, what you can buy from Floor Mart. We're going to place this underneath. Now, heat seaming tape doesn't stretch. So what 
is recommended to do is actually heat seam while your carpet is actually under a little bit of stretch um, just so when it's then put into the area um, you're actually not going to put tension either side of heat seam and tape and then you're not going to get kind of like a ramp effect on the heat seam. Also, to stop the heat seaming tape from joining to the underlay, definitely don't want to do that. Um, what I'm just gonna do on this occasion is use a heat seaming board. Gonna pop that underneath. The heat seaming tape, just ensuring that the black line is actually on the join line to make sure that we've got equal strength on both sides. Okay, so at this point, normally what I'd do, uh, using carpet holes, again, there's a few different varieties on floor mat that you can use, um, put it under a stretch, using a bit of carpet hole, and you're virtually ready to go. Okay, so on this bit, we've got the heat seam iron just underneath the carpet. Uh, we're actually gonna run this down the entire uh, seam that we're doing. We've not got the heat seam iron on the highest temperature. With heat seam intake, you can usually find out what is the acceptable temperature to make sure you don't crystallize it. Um, so on this occasion, I'm just on a heat setting just prior to three on the heat seam and iron. So as we push forward just a little bit at the time, the length of the heat seam and iron, we're actually just gonna lower the carpet into the heat seam intake, making sure that we don't trap any of the carpet pile. So as we're pushing the heat seam iron on, just making sure that it's lowered evenly to make sure no piles getting trapped, the pile height is exactly the same, and then just pushing the heat seam weight on as we go. Okay, so again, just virtually the length of the heat seam and iron coming off the back of the, th the thin, pushing it down, making sure that there's no gap in the backing as well as we go and then pushing it a little bit onwards and virtually this is as easy as it is all the way if you find that the the carpet is bowing at all you can set out some carpet holes you can get your knee kicker out and just push that bow back in or if there's any bias etc Okay, so just pushing it down. You notice that on, if we add the heat seaming iron on number four, you'd be getting quite a bit of fumes because it would be too hot for the heat seaming tape. On number three, we're actually fine. We are in a ventilated area anyway. Okay, so just taking it nice and steady all the way down. And there we have the heat seam that's gone all the way. Wait for that to fully cool down and then we are then good to go.